What's going on everybody? I'm Tim from Artillery Life. And today we're gonna go over the basics, the 101 of kayak fishing. Let's do it. All right, now before we get all crazy and I start spitting all this stuff off, I figure you might wanna know a little bit about me and my background. No, I'm not some super famous world kayaker, but I have been kayaking roughly around seven years now. In those seven years, I have gone through a lot of bumps and bruises and made the mistake of not really doing my research a lot and just kind of figuring out how I went along until I started realizing, hey, you know what, this kayak fishing thing, I actually really enjoy this. That's when I started reading more about it and getting more into it. And man, I wish I would have known some of this stuff when I got into it. And that's what this video video is for y'all. All right, number one, if you're just getting into this sport and you want to start kayak fishing, maybe you've been fishing from the shore for a little while, or maybe you're just totally new to fishing, but you know a kayak might be the way to go because one, it's not as expensive as a boat, and two, you haven't had that much luck on shore. I'll tell you what, a kayak is a great way to go for y'all. Just make sure when you are picking your kayak out, you take a couple things into consideration. One, your weight. When you're picking a kayak out, if you're a more heavy set guy, you definitely want to look at that load bearing and also feel out, look at YouTube reviews of different kayaks of the kayak that you want. I swear for almost every single kayak there is out there, there is probably a YouTube review on it. Check out a bunch of them. Just move it around. Check it out. See what it looks like. See what might be comfortable for you, your size, your height, your body weight. Next is going to be how much money do you have? At the end of the day, a lot of things do boil down the money and it stinks it does stink i'll tell you what when i first started i started out i bought a kayak from walmart it wasn't even fishing a kayak i don't know how big fishing kayak fishing was back then but it was just a regular normal kayak that i retrofitted into a fishing kayak it was like a sun dolphin or something like that yeah it was like a sun dolphin got it from walmart for for like 200 bucks and then i went on youtube and looked up a whole bunch of diy kayak stuff just kind of went from there and honestly if you are first starting off kayak fishing you don't really have experience with it i would go that route Buy a used kayak that's cheap. Don't spend more than a few hundred bucks or buy a newer one that's kind of cheap just to see if you're going to get into it because if you're going to get into it, it's best to try it off like that so you don't go blow your money on a $3,000 Hobie then realize, oh crap, I kind of hate kayak fish and resell it and not get all your money back. If you buy the cheap one and you don't end up liking kayak fishing, too easy, go sell it, not out of that much money. It's fine. Once you establish what type of kayak that you want and how much you can actually afford, I would honestly say don't even put your fishing stuff in the kayak right off the bat, like a whole loading it down with a whole bunch of gear. Get your kayak, go out in the water, take a rod with you, and see how it feels throwing and casting, reaching behind you, which honestly, I, a lot of times I don't suggest a full on reach depending on your on the kayak. If you're on one of those little 10 foot cheaper kayaks, you know, it's better to physically turn your whole body to the side and then grab what you need to get. But that, that's a lesson for another time. When you get it, just take it down the water, see how it feels. See what it feels like when you're casting, see what it feels like when you're paddling and moving around. And that gets into our next topic, paddling. Just realize that when you're paddling on a kayak, get that efficiency down first there's a thousand videos on YouTube that'll show you how to properly paddle so I will say the paddle does make a world of difference depending on what your budget range is I first started out with some cheap you know 20 I think it was like $30 paddle from Walmart that I got and I used it and I was like well you know I didn't really have anything to gear it up against so I started paddling with some other dudes and I'm like man I'm not really going as fast as they are come to find out they all have stuff like this this paddle right here is a no limit paddle this has done really well for me and honestly it, it, it goes through the water I mean, and a quick little test just if you don't know too much about paddles like I said and all this stuff you can go find it on YouTube they'll talk all about it what I like to do is I'll just give a quick little test I'll tech press down on the pedal and see how flexible it is you know if it's not that flexible then it's probably gonna be pretty stiffer you're gonna get more push on well that's upside down but you're gonna get more push on the water as you're going through paddling and also if you haven't done it before look up a video that talks about how to properly paddle a kayak because that alone will make a world of difference when i first started i was all over the place not doing anything right and just making a lot of noise scaring away all the fish and once you actually learn how to properly paddle how to move your hands across the paddle, even how to just hold your paddle right, it will make a world of difference. So make sure you take that paddle into consideration when you're getting into it. Next thing you're gonna need, after you got your kayak and you got your paddle, you are gonna need a PFD. That is right, a personal flotation device. Once again, when I first started kayak fishing, of course I bought the bottom end cheapest, that orange thing that you wear over your body. That's what I started out with because most states do require you to wear a PFD or have a PFD in the, the kayak. As time went on and I realized my back's getting a little sore and this ain't very comfortable, I went ahead and upgraded to one of these one of these NRS Chinook PFDs. These things are awesome and they are specifically made for kayaking because the back of this right here 
is risen up so that way you don't have to be leaning on that padding on your back you know this sits up on the top end so that way you can go ahead and get good support on your back end not ruining your lumbar your lower back and all that stuff because that's where most of the pain is going to start kicking in but yes get a pfd whether it's cheap whether it's expensive buy yourself a pfd because at the end of the day it's just not worth it one if you're fishing small little ponds all right i get it there's not going to be any motorized traffic out there but you still never truly know at least have it on you if you're fishing bigger lakes that have boat traffic and people rolling through this is a must you must wear this I'm, I, I'm telling you you will be much happier if you're alive at the end of the day some ignorant boater out there accidentally strikes you or flips you over and you fall out of your kayak and you have this on because if you're knocked out and you're gonna be like oh well, I know how to swim great but if you're knocked out you ain't gonna know how to swim because you ain't gonna be conscious and this thing will keep you floating upright with your head out of the water once you figured out what kayak you want the paddle you want and the PFD you want now you got to figure out how the heck am I gonna move it now me when I first started fishing I didn't have my truck I was just moving duty stations I left Hawaii so I sold my truck and all I had was my wife's car what I did was I just went out and bought some of these foam pads and these are pretty well destroyed and set up because I leave my kayak permanently sitting on it because I don't want to ruin the bottom of it. I went out and bought some of these foam pads. I set it on top and then I strapped the kayak down over top of it and that's how I moved it around. Eventually if you have a pickup truck, yeah, life's going to be a lot easier. If you have one of those longer kayaks, maybe 12 foot or longer and your bed's not entirely long, look into buying something like a bed extender like I have on mine. You can see it in a few of my videos. But that is definitely one thing you should consider before buying your kayak is how am I going to get it from point A to point B. The next thing and I, every kayak fisherman has made this mistake at some point in time and you probably will too even after watching this video but before you go out for that first time and even every single time afterwards lay your stuff out lay your stuff out do what i like to call a pcc pci for you military folks you know what that is do your pre-combat checks and your pre-combat inspections on yourself make sure you have everything do a layout i even myself i made myself a checklist so that way in the morning time, as I'm loading everything up, I can go down the list, check, check, check. Now I got a system down so much where I can literally keep most of the stuff on my kayak so that way I don't gotta think about it too hard and take everything out because that is one of the more annoying things that happens in your kayak fishing is the constant loading and unloading of all your equipment. If you can figure out a good system to load all your stuff up with the minimal amount of going back and forth, hey, that just makes your life so easier. That's why a lot of guys like to move their kayaks with trailers because all they gotta do on a trailer is pretty much modify it however they want it or maybe Maybe it's already pre-modded up for them and they can load all their stuff on that trailer, back it up, put it in their garage, their carport, their backyard, wherever the heck they're going to put it. And then when they want to take it back out, just unhook or uh, hook it back up to your truck and you're off. A couple options there when you're talking about your gear and making sure you have all your gear before you go out. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm not, and I'm probably not the only but person who's ever gone out, driven an hour away, and only to realize, oh my gosh, I left my paddle at home. Another thing to do is set all your stuff up like you're gonna be out on the water before you actually go out on the water for your first time. So that way you got a kind of an idea of where everything is at, especially if you're in a smaller kayak and you don't have room to move around with. Once you get into that habit and you go out for the first time, you're gonna be like, okay, well, it makes more sense to put this here, this here, this here. Go back, make those changes. You'll figure it out on your own how you like your own setup, but just do a pre-setup. That way you can kind of figure out where everything's gonna go so you're not making some last minute decisions. Transitioning over here, we're gonna go to my kayak, which I pulled out of my garage, and we'll go over some of the other stuff. Make sure you have some type of knives, pliers, or scissors. Me, I got these cheap dollar store scissors. I actually had a guy comment on one of my Facebook saying this was hilarious, and I thought he was being funny at first, and then he was actually being really mean, but who cares? It's a dollar pair of scissors. It cuts line just as good as some fancy, expensive line cutters. Make sure you got yourself a pair of pliers, because no matter what type of fish you're fishing for, maybe it's something you don't want to stick your hand into, or maybe the hook gets caught up somewhere. Invest in, those were, you know, 10 bucks off Amazon, and it doesn't have to be expensive. So make sure you got yourself that. Also also, you see how there's cup holders here? Utilize them. Make sure that you have water on your kayak and your trip because you never know how long you're going to actually stay out and what you're going to need. Make sure you have some way, like me, I like to put all my stuff in a milk crate that I modified up and put a whole bunch of different rod holders on them because as I said before, I like to take pretty much all Bass Pro Shop with me whenever I go fishing. Make sure you have a way to secure these down. You see I got these bungee straps over here so that way if I do ever flip over, 
I'm gonna be good and I know, well, just some of my tackle is gonna come out, not all of it. Net is not super 100% necessary. When it comes to that net, it really just depends on what you're fishing for and what you're doing and whatnot. When you're going for your net, just keep in mind what type of fish you're, 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 you're trying to go for. I know some states are different, like up in Washington, if you're fishing for salmon, you gotta make sure you have that net, put that fish in the net when you bring them up and then hold them outside the boat and actually physically check to make sure it's the right type of fish because if you put that fish inside your boat or your kayak, woo buddy, don't let DNR see you. Me, I like to fish a lot for bass. So when I went and got my net, I have one of those rubber mesh nets. So that way I don't get my treble hooks whenever I'm rocking those square bill crankbaits or anything like that. Getting all caught up in the webbing of that fat, those fabric nets. I made that mistake plenty of times before. Next thing that you're gonna want is a dry bag. And no, you don't need some fancy expensive Yeti like I have here. This was a gift for my wife for Christmas. Thank you, honey but make sure you have yourself a dry bag, something that you can put all your stuff in and you know it's gonna stay dry. And if you got some type of in-hole storage that's watertight, make sure it's actually watertight first and you can use that as well. I like to have a dry bag along with me just to make sure so that way I have easy access to whatever I need out of that kayak. So the next thing that we're gonna go over is when you catch your first fish out of your kayak. And when you catch that first fish, it's gonna be really exciting. You're gonna, especially if you've been fishing onshore the entire time and you finally got yourself an offshore type fish, you're gonna be freaking out. Just make sure you remember that you are on a kayak you're not on land you're not on a boat and if you go crazy depending on what kind of kayak you have you might have the potential of flipping over so don't freak out when you get that first fish just reel it in normally stay stable pull it in use your net or if you're fishing for bass like i do just reach down there and grab that sucker pull them on in the boat all right and one of the last things to take into consideration figure out where you're going to launch from you got all these awesome resources out there like google maps google earth where you can go ahead and look at your local ponds lakes or maybe you already know but just go out there and practice your launch you want to make sure that you're launching in a good way on, you know, on a softer surface that way you're not ruining the bottom of that kayak or maybe you got somewhere that actually has kayak launches built in because kayak fishing is starting to get pretty popular now and you can go ahead and rock with something like that one last thing before we actually do get out of here and i just wanted to give my little bit of spiel on kayak fishing in today's world honestly kayak fishing is kind of blowing up into one of those huge sports what originally started out as something for dudes who just didn't have the money to get a boat like me and they wanted to fish from offshore, or people who just wanted to do a different way of fishing and get away from all the boats and go into areas that you normally can't get to, is kind of turned into a money-making machine sport. I mean, you got kayaks out there that are costing the same amount as cars and cheap cars. And, you know, you got these different products and brand names and everything out there that sells attachments for your kayak that are ridiculously crazy and expensive and people just pandering to the audience. And that's what people are gonna do, you know? And if you got the money for that stuff, by all means, go out, buy it outstanding just remember you don't have to have all that stuff to have an enjoyable experience on a kayak you can buy yourself a nice cheap kayak mod it up yourself get the bare bones basics go out there with one rod one reel and and just pretty much go out there and have a great time and catch some fish you don't need 30,000 fishing poles like i like to bring out you don't need to have a, a you know a hobie pro angler 14 and yak attack pole holder or a freaking yak powered trolling motor and all this other stuff and those are fun i'm not digging on those products those are those are fine products as far as i know i don't really have much of those i do have a hobie though but don't overcomplicate it don't overcomplicate the sport this was originally meant to be something super simple and easy for guys like us who just don't make that much money to enjoy fishing offshore so don't be intimidated by all that stuff out there you don't have to buy into the hype and feel the need to have to buy all this crazy expensive stuff because at the end of the day as long as you're out there on your water, you're catching some fish, you're having a good time, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. All right, y'all go out there and make some memories on that kayak. Hopefully y'all have a great one. Please like and subscribe if this video was helpful to you in any way. I really do appreciate it because I love making these videos. It's just fun, whatever. It's just fun. Artillery life, out.